I currently have 52 piercings and in my life I've had over 70. And in that time, I have come across a lot of downfalls to having piercings. So in this week's video, I'm going to be going through that list. If you wear earphones to listen to music, getting your tragus pierced can be a bad idea, mostly for the healing process because you can't put earphones in your ears while your piercing is still healing. And even after it's fully healed, I've had my tragus done for years now, and even when I'm wearing earphones in my ears for a long period of time, I have to be very careful with how I put the earphones in, how I position it, and how the bar in my ear is positioned. If the bar is pointed down, it sort of gets caught on the earphone when I'm pulling it out, and after a while, it starts to make my ear hurt, even though it's fully healed. If you sleep on your side, having ear piercings can be a little bit of a problem. Personally, for me, I sleep on my back and I physically can't sleep on my side, so I don't have any problems with my ear piercings when I'm sleeping. But it all depends on the piercing, such as my industrial. While that was still healing, it was a pain in the backside because the bar was so long and it was pushing against the back of my ear all night. And that was so annoying because an industrial piercing can take up to a year to heal. So in that time, you are very uncomfortable and it's very painful to poke and it's painful to sleep on. So if you are wanting to get your industrial pierced and you're worried about sleeping, just get your industrial pierced on the opposite side. So if you sleep on the right, get it pierced on the left and vice versa if you sleep on your left. But this all depends on where the piercing is and what sort of piercing it is. If it's a nipple piercing, an eyebrow piercing, piercing or a belly button piercing, generally that won't be much of a problem when you're sleeping. Possibly with a belly button piercing when you're rolling over at night, it can get caught in your clothes. And this is mostly when it's just healing because when your belly button is healing, if you tug it, it goddamn hurts. And there is a bit of a problem if you have any fancy belly jewelry, like the little dangly things that hang down underneath the bar. When I was 14, I had my belly button pierced and I was climbing over a fence and the bar got caught in the barbed wire on the fence and I had to keep going, otherwise it would have been a big split of barbed wire straight between my legs. So it ended up tugging, it bled a bit and it goddamn hurt. Piercing such as an anti-tragus or a conch piercing, depending on how you sleep, they shouldn't be much of a problem. It all depends on your sleep posture and how much you move during the night and depending on your pillow. And it also depends on the shape of your ear. Nobody's ears are exactly the same and nobody's ears are symmetrical. My right ear is higher than my left ear. My left ear sits further back than my right ear. So if I was to sleep on my preferred side, which is my right side, I would have a lot of problems with the piercings that I have in there now. If you do any sports or any sort of physical activity while you're working, that can also be a problem, especially with a piercing that hasn't fully healed, such as a belly button piercing or a nipple piercing. Nipple piercings aren't as much of a danger of getting caught. If you're a female and you have your nipples pierced, Generally, any sort of sports and activities won't be much of a problem if you're wearing a bra over your piercing. The risk of it getting caught is way, way lower than if you're just wearing a shirt and you're doing physical activity and running around like rugby or any sort of tackle sport like that. And even with an eyebrow piercing or any surface piercings and some ear piercings, they can get caught pretty easily when you're doing physical activity. And wearing fancy jewelry with little dangly parts onto the ball and anything like that, that will heighten the risk of getting them caught on things. If you have long hair, thick hair or curly hair and you have ear piercings, generally your hair will get caught in the jewelry a lot. I am so used to this that I very rarely even notice if my hair gets caught. And my hair does tangle in the jewelry sometimes, but this all depends on what sort of jewelry you have. If you have those studs with the clip on the back, 
they will get tangled in your hair a lot more than a labrette bar or an eyebrow bar or one of those flat bars. And when an ear piercing is still healing, getting your hair caught or getting your new fresh piercing tugged on something goddamn hurts. And this happens a lot every time I go to the hairdressers. So I always make sure that I'm not wearing dangly earrings when I go to the hairdressers. And I always make sure that they're aware that my piercings are there. But I will always, every single time, get my ears pulled or get it caught on their comb. But I don't even notice this anymore because I am so used to having my ear piercings there. A downfall to having mouth piercings is the risk of damaging your teeth. For a long time, I really didn't think that my mouth piercings were doing damage to my teeth. Until one time I went to the dentist and crap. I had receding gums from my lip piercings and from one of my tongue bars. So I bit the bullet and I took out five of my lip piercings and one of my tongue jewelry. And that sucks. I hate taking out jewelry, especially because of the amount of money that I've paid to get all of these piercings done in the first place. But my teeth are way more important than having my lip piercings. Even though I still miss them, I would prefer to keep my teeth and not have my piercings. My side tongue bar doesn't get caught on anything. Occasionally, if I have a certain sort of chewing gum or a lolly or some sort of weird food, sometimes it does tangle in the tongue bar, but that doesn't happen very often. If I was to have one of those fancy sort of tongue bars, that would have a higher risk of getting caught on my tongue ball rather than just having a standard tongue bar. And if the bar's too long, generally when I'm eating, I will bite down on the ball or the bar and that bloody hurts especially if there's a metal ball or a metal bar on the tongue jewelry. And my middle tongue piercing, the one that I have taken out, that one was pierced slightly on an angle because of where my tongue web is under my tongue. Because the piercing can't go straight through the web in your tongue, it sort of has to go sideways slightly. And that caused a lot of problems, especially while my tongue was healing and I had a really, really long bar in it. And because the tongue bar went slightly this way, I would constantly keep biting on it when I was eating. But after it healed, I didn't have any problems. It was just damaging the inside of my teeth on my top teeth here. And I decided to take it out. But the hole is still open because I had it pierced for quite a few years. And generally a tongue piercing, even after the jewelry's taken out, will stay sort of open to an extent. If there's anything that you think I might have forgotten, please let me know and write it in the comments. And if you have any questions or concerns, please ask and if I can help, I'm more than happy to. And if you like this video, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed already, please do. Thank you so much for watching. I love you all and I'll see you next week. Bye.